Hi. Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, a, our Couchbase uh, Hangout on Air, uh, where we do kind of office hours as well as uh, try to show off some of the stuff that we're working on. Uh, I'm Matt Engine Throne with Couchbase, uh, and with me today is Jens Elfke. And Hi. Jens. Thanks. And Jens works on the uh, on the uh, on Catchface Mobile. And then uh, returning to visit us is Sergey Fsev. I'm working for on uh, Ruby client and uh, C clients. Great, thanks guys. Uh, so uh, right now we're broadcasting live. This is on the Catchface uh, Plus page, or Google Plus page. Um, and as we, uh, it, it will also be archived later on our YouTube page. So uh, if you're viewing this on YouTube, thanks for uh, coming by and, and checking out what we said in the past. Uh, what we normally do is we, uh, we ask people to post questions in advance so that we have an opportunity to uh, gather whatever information is required and uh, be able to get the right experts to uh, join the call. Uh, today, um, I, let me have a look here and see uh, what kinds of questions. Last I checked, we did not actually have any questions submitted in advance, so then we'd be uh, moving on to... Uh, mostly just the uh, uh, the demonstrations, sort of our show and tell for the day. Uh, so, uh, yeah, having a quick look, it does not look like uh, we currently have any questions posted. Uh, so there aren't any, uh, since there aren't any questions, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jump on to the first demonstration. So, Sergey, let me ask you to, uh, uh, I, I think you brought something to show today. Uh, you were going to show us uh, the latest... Uh, experimental integration we have with Event Machine, right? Yes. Great. Well, I'll turn it over to you, and you can show us what you got. Um, and again, if anyone's watching this, uh, please uh, feel free to post a question, or if you want to interact with this live, just go ahead and join the Hangout. Sergey, it's all yours. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm going to follow my recent blog post uh, with uh, demo application. It will be a simple chat, chat uh, server on event machine uh, with Couchbase as a logs, keeping uh, the logs of the chat session. I'm starting screen share now. Okay. <coughs> Here is uh, three se sections. Uh, I first I will start uh, the server and show the demo, and then I go uh, through the code. To start server, you can uh, just check out uh, uh, GitHub repository uh, of Couchbase Ruby client, and uh, the chat is uh, in. I'll show it. Uh, Couchbase Ruby client. Okay. On the GitHub and example directory and chat em. Here you can find the uh, uh, quick start guide and all the source code. Hey, so hey Sergey, one quick question. So I'm mm -hmm. familiar with the event machine. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know if Jens is, but uh, in case we have some viewers out there who are not familiar with event machine, um, is it accurate to just say it's sort of a, a, a reactor pattern, uh, event-driven way of writing uh, Ruby code that typically is used in a web application, typically with HTTP. Is that uh, correct? Uh, yes, it is, it is correct, but uh, Event Machine itself uh, isn't restricted by HTTP protocol. It uh, can be uh, simple sockets, uh, like my demo application, just a plain socket, uh, TCP socket uh, with uh, text protocol. Okay, awesome. And, uh, if, uh, People uh, familiar with uh, Twisted Framework in Python, uh, yeah. Node.js, uh, it's uh, kind of the same thing, in, but in, in Ruby. Got it. OK, so, sorry, sorry to take you off track there. By all means, uh, continue on. OK. I'm starting uh, going to examples, chat in, and starting the server. Okay, uh, it says that uh, the server was running on uh, port 999, and I can uh, use uh, just uh, Telnet to connect it. Telnet. Okay. Post 
there. It's asking me uh, my name, Sergey, and uh, just say me hello. And now I will download. Okay, uh, now I can uh, start the conversation between all of these um, participants. And one, uh, once I uh, interrupt this session, it will also notify that I've been left. Very cool. And Okay, the session uh, has been closed, and now uh, we can inspect uh, our log in the... in the default bucket. You can see that uh, there are some uh, new keys has been added, and uh, we can also inspect the contents of these keys. Hold. Here is a... Uh, for example, the schema is simple, just time, author, and uh, the message itself. Got it. Uh, you can also uh, read uh, the blog post uh, on the Couchbase blogs about it, uh, and uh, it also contains a view, simple view. Ah, it is here. Uh, this is a view we, we just uh, format uh, all the entries, uh, to display somewhere else. Uh, I can run this. OK, So cool. you, you can just render it on the your form. I see. And so we could also say, for example, use some of the time series views kinds of things and see uh, yes. we can do things like uh, group level and so forth <coughs> and, and break the yes. views down. But um, you, your intent with this app was just to kind of show an example of a mm -hmm. uh, of an event machine application that's also yes. uh, using the catch phrase client. Uh, yes, uh, the complex thing was originally uh, it is possible to use uh, Couchbase with event machine without uh, recent recent uh, patches, but uh, in this case uh, our default implementation of uh, uh, IO level will. Um, Will not uh, use uh, event machine um, routines uh, to drive uh, to drive IO because uh, uh, Couchbase game uh, is using uh, libcouchbase, which also asynchronous, and mm -hmm. uh, also use uh, reactor pattern, and uh, uh, it will just waste uh, some. Uh, it will just waste a CPU time uh, because it won't use uh, um, uh, event machine um, reactor loop and will block it uh, until uh, the I operation will complete. So it, it will, uh, by default, it just behave like any other synchronous uh, um, library. There is an addition was to implement uh, implement. Um, New engine, mm -hmm. which is called uh, Event Machine. Here is uh, initialization of um, of the uh, connection options, which will used by uh, by bucket uh, singleton. I can also rewrite it um, in the, in another way, like Couchbase connect and pass these options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the two options for how you would create a uh, a connection yes. to a bucket. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what Sergey is referring to there, while you're while you're typing, what Sergey is referring to is that we have a, a sort of a convenience um, kind of thing in the Catchbase client for uh, there to be a singleton per Ruby yes. VM. Mm -hmm. The good uh, thing about uh, this singleton because uh, is that uh, this singleton uh, is stored in thread uh, local storage. Mm -hmm. So if you will s uh, create new thread or or fiber, I think fiber will work too. 
um, it will use uh, different it will use uh, different connection uh, handle so we can easily uh, you shouldn't uh, lock your handle and uh, use any mutexes because it is local to current uh, thread yep. so uh, you can see uh, currently uh, two options uh, to use uh, to use cross base with uh, event machine the first option is async true means that uh, the instance the current instance of connection will be completely asynchronous uh, because by default it uh, will create uh, the instance in synchronous mode and uh, um, will uh, try to connect this handle immediately in if event machine in inside the event machine loop you can see this uh, here the starting of the loop uh, we cannot uh, we, we can do synchronous uh, io but uh, with uh, event machine uh, engine uh, it it won't work until we uh, start io tra traction so uh, we need to make uh, this handle asynchronous and the second uh, option is uh, to select the engine event machine mm -hmm. uh, next we will uh, wrap our code which will start event machine server mm -hmm. uh, with uh, on connect on connect callback this means that uh, once we uh, we will be notified that uh, uh, the connection to Couchbase was uh, successful, successfully established. Uh, this is result success. We can start uh, the server safely. Got it. Great. Um, and so the the big thing there, of course, is that we aligned all of the event processing in yes. uh, the Couchbase Ruby gem with the event processing in event machine so it's all extremely efficient very um, high performance which is is one thing that yes. we, we call always aim for mm -hmm. what is uh, what this engine does uh, for Couchbase uh, game it's inject uh, event machine all uh, event machine network uh, functions into mm -hmm. lib Couchbase so uh, lib Couchbase can use uh, any any custom any custom uh, IO, uh, IO layer. So if if you uh, write in a custom application which uh, already using uh, your uh, event uh, some IO routing, so you can just override uh, it for libcouchbase and use libcouchbase just for protocol uh, uh, parsing and uh, the interface will be the same. So, cool. uh, and the la last point is a log function, mm -hmm. uh, which which is called uh, after each broadcast. Broadcast is a user user fun function which will just iterate over the client's array and uh, send uh, uh, send the message to each client socket. And uh, before it, it will uh, store the message to the cache base uh, bucket. It uh, it contains uh, two two steps. First uh, is increment uh, the key uh, ID, mm -hmm. get a new different one. And if uh, and in, in the callback of this increment, it will create a message and uh, set set it to the bucket. Um, also, uh, three uh, functions above, post init, receive data, and unbind is uh, interface of the event machine connection. Mm -hmm. You can uh, see that uh, chat server class is uh, inheriting uh, EM connection, and in post init, post init uh, called once uh, when when the um, Reactor receive new client connection and uh, instantiate uh, the instance of the server. There, mm -hmm. uh, in this function, we are asking for name. Then each time uh, the socket is ready to 
process uh, the data from the client, it will call receive and passing as a data itself. It, it's just a text protocol, so we, we are... Uh, if uh, the current user, uh, like, uh, log it in, uh, we will just uh, broadcast this message. Um, otherwise, we will um, uh, treat uh, the message as uh, username mm -hmm. and uh, store it for, for the future and uh, push... Uh, push uh, the self instance uh, into the um, class variable uh, clients uh, where we, we can uh, where we are storing all the current chat connections uh, okay. we, we are using this array uh, when we are broadcasting and uh, in unbind when machine calls unbind uh, once the connection is closed so we, we can uh, uh, Remove, remove self from uh, the list and uh, broadcast message that uh, someone has has been left. Got it. I think I spot a bug though. What happens if two uh, people try to log in with the same name? <laughs> I know it's just a demo app. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it it should be okay. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> For example. <laughs> In Skype, you can also log in uh, using the same name. Oh, I guess that's true. We'll just have uh, two connections in the uh, in the yes. list, and since it's just an array, it, it will be it will be back okay, if okay. I using some uh, authentic authentication. But yeah, I don't use it. Fair enough. <laughs> so I didn't spot a bug. Very cool. Uh, thanks. Anything else you want to mention on it? Um, no, currently no. Uh, in next session, I maybe. Uh, uh, give you an example in more modern approach to event machine is okay. uh, to use uh, game uh, EM EM synchrony synchrony uh, which will um, allow us to um, to use fibers from uh, recent Ruby versions and uh, um, we don't we can uh, eliminate uh, all these callbacks uh, like uh, you you can find in a uh, log function where mm -hmm. we, we ha have to uh, put set uh, operation into the increment because we need to uh, execute them sequentially like you are doing uh, in Node.js. Event machine is better than Node.js in this way because uh, there is a possibility to write a sequential code uh, but in a synchronous uh, Oh really? Okay, so that will execute in a fiber which, if I remember yes. correctly, is a light. It, it's it's uh, lighter than a thread, so it's it's uh, yes. it's a uh, you know it, very lightweight it, thread, if you will. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, it uses a small stack, and uh, it it very cheap uh, to create. Yep. Unlike yep. Th thread. Yeah. So unlike having to create a thread with the underlying. Yes, uh, and it doesn't use any scheduler. Uh, it's driven by user code. Ah. Okay. Okay, awesome. Yeah, well, we'll look forward to that. A uh, couple other things I think we need to mention here. One is uh, this is in the latest version of the Ruby Gem, which was yes. uh, released on February 5th. So you have to be on, is it version 1.2.2, Sergey? I think that's correct. Uh, I, think, I think it is. Uh, Ruby Gems. Yep. Touch base. I, I so that's where we added the experimental support for, uh, for uh, Event Machine. Uh, and yes. then uh, the other place to look is to blog.couchbase.com for Sergey's blog uh, that uh, covers. It, it's uh, one of. It should be one of the recent blogs. So yep. Yep. Using uh, Couchbase game with event machine. Exactly. Uh, so should be able. So if anyone's watching and wants to uh, give it a shot themselves, shouldn't take more than a few minutes. And those are the couple uh, couple references. Yes, Great. it cover, covers installation steps and other maybe interesting things. Yeah, sounds really good. Okay, great. Thanks, Sergey. Um, let me pop over really briefly to the uh, Catchbase Google Plus page and see if uh, there have been any questions that have been posted. Uh, no, let me see here. Uh, just going to reload. Give me one moment. See if anything interesting has been posted for us. 
so far, it doesn't look like we have any questions. I guess we're just doing a good job answering them all on the forums as they come up or on the mailing list, on the developer mailing list. Um, but if you do have a question, by all means, uh, and you're watching the broadcast, uh, either feel free to join or go ahead and post. I also see Tron Norby joined us, but he's not sharing his video, so he's just uh, uh, listening. Right, Tron? Yeah, that's correct. I'm also <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, this is uh, quite international. We've got. Uh, I'm actually in uh, Tokyo right now for our CouchConf here uh, in Tokyo uh, on Friday, and then uh, Jens is in our Mountain View headquarters, I assume. Uh, yes. and, and then Sergey's in Belarus, and Trond is in uh, um, uh, Trondheim or, or outside Trondheim. So, uh, got quite a few people. Awesome. Okay, let's um, so let's uh, go ahead and turn it over to Jens. Jens, uh, I know there have been some uh, recent uh, uh, happenings over in Catchface Mobile, so I want to give you an opportunity to kind of sh uh, share what uh, what you've been up to. Yeah, thanks. Um, we were kind of under the radar for a while in 2012 because so much of the company was focused on getting Couchbase Server 2 out the door, but we are uh, revving things up again. So let me just share my presentation window. I'm just going to be showing some slides. No live code today, sorry. Um, so, uh, I work on mobile stuff here at Couchbase. Are the slides showing up? Just making sure. And I've uh, yep. been here for about a year and a half. So what's happened so far? 2011, which is about when I started, we um, developed and released this first generation of Couchbase mobile, which was literally CouchDB ported to iOS and Android. So that included the Erlang VM, JavaScript VM, et cetera. And also a, a native iOS Objective-C client API called CouchCoco that we wrote from scratch. And that shipped kind of late 2011. 2012, as I said, we were kind of under the radar and really used the time to do a bunch of Skunk Works R&D. We decided that uh, the original Couchbase mobile was too heavyweight, so we kind of wrote a new implementation from scratch using no CouchDB code that we called TouchDB. And we were also working on a um, server-side technology for managing lots of multiple users that we called SyncPoint. And uh, we've kind of trashed that. We've got a better way of doing the same stuff, which I'll go into in a lot more detail in a minute. And so now it's 2013, we're kind of working on the second generation now, uh, which uh, we call the client-side Couchbase Lite and the server-side the Couchbase Sync Gateway. So I'll talk about the client stuff first. Um, well, this will be fairly quick, then I'll spend most of the time on the server side. So here's the first generation that I talked about, the Couchbase Mobile where inside your application you had the Couchbase mobile framework, which itself contained CouchDB, the Erlang VM, and the SpiderMonkey JavaScript VM. And this exposes a REST API, which then you almost certainly want to use some kind of a native um, adapter API like CouchCoco on iOS or, or Ektorp on uh, Android to talk to. And this thing was fairly heavyweight just by virtue of its containing all these interpreters and things, so it was about three and a half megabytes of code to add into your app, and uh, the startup of it took something like three seconds, depending on your hardware. So it it worked, and th it was used, but we weren't satisfied with the size and performance. 2012, we uh, had this rewritten version called TouchDB, which is the same functionality, or most of the same functionality as CouchDB but written in native code. That is, uh, the iOS version is written in Objective-C, the Android version is written in Java. And that uses SQLite as its data storage engine. And again, this exposes REST API, so on top of that, you've got the CouchCoco or Ektorp native API adapter. And so with this, the size came down to around, like both those frameworks together, around uh, 800K for iOS. And the startup is really fast, like under 100 milliseconds. It's hardly noticeable. And this has been pretty popular, and a number of developers are using it, especially on iOS. Um, there's, I think we've got at least five or six apps now in the App Store shipping that are using this, and there's more in development. 
what's going on now is um, this started out being called TouchDB 1.5, but uh, we decided that since we're getting back into productizing this as opposed to the Skunk Works mode, we needed a name that fits in better with our branding, so it's become Couchbase Lite. Same, basically same technology, just uh, the name's changed. And so what we're doing in the code size is um, instead of, if I go back to the previous slide, we have the separation between the REST API and the native API, where all of the application's requests got sort of converted into these JSONified HTTP requests sent over, deciphered, and evaluated, and then the results were sent back again as JSON. There's obviously a lot of translation and interpretation there. So in the new version, um, we've kind of squashed those layers together, so there is no longer this interior REST API. Your native um, API calls go directly into the database code. It just strips out a ton of overhead. The, code's, the code is somewhat smaller now. I think it's maybe like 300K smaller for iOS. Um, performance time, again, is really fast, and, uh, but the performance is much better. There are some people who are having, um, running into some performance bottlenecks, especially with the re-indexing large views or doing large queries. And as soon as they switched over to this branch of the code, the problems just went away. So this, this is going to be really cool. Um, this is kind of in pre-alpha right now. We're, um, we're working pretty hard on developing it. Yeah, and we have, an, if I remember correctly, we've, we've had a number of uh, really good uh, contributions from the mailing list, both in terms of uh, issues and diagnosing issues, but also um, uh, finding things. And we should mention this is uh, all uh, Apache 2.0 licensed open source, correct? Yeah, uh, the uh, mobile couch base mailing list uh, on Google Groups has been awesome. There are a lot of contributors there, people like not only using the software, but submitting lots of feedback, finding bugs. Um, um, fixing bugs, sending us patches, suggesting features. Really good group. Yeah, I just lurked there, but it's been a, been a, gr a really good collaborative group. Great. Yep. Okay, so now the, uh, the server side of the equation. The current status of stuff is that all of these things we've developed, the original Couchbase Mobile, TouchDB, um, Couchbase Lite, these all use the sync protocol that is it's used by Apache CouchDB. Um, it's an open protocol. It's REST-based, so it's very standard compliant. It goes through firewalls and uh, proxies very easily. And there are uh, at least three implementations of it now. So it's been a good protocol. Um, it made total sense for us to do this in 2011 when CouchBase was very heavily focused on CouchDB compatibility. We even shipped uh, Couchbase single server, which was um, just a repackaging of CouchDB. But as development of Couchbase 2.0 went on, uh, the CouchDB portions of it got really heavily modified and uh, streamlined to keep the performance fast to the point where it's really not compatible at all with uh, CouchDB's APIs anymore. So that left us in the situation that we have this client product that doesn't really have any kind of fit or synergy with our server product, so we needed to do stuff about that. So the goals for us now on the server side of mobile technology is we obviously need to connect and sync with Couchbase server. Um, that's the thing you know Couchbase clients want. It's going to be really important to have, as, as well as preserving the CouchDB syncing, which is really useful for developers who want to just use a hosted service like Iris Couch. We also want this to scale to large numbers of users, um, where if you can have uh, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of different users all trying to sync with your database. And I'll get into more details about why that's challenging. And then also um, filtering these data sets on the server. Some of these um, servers obviously are keeping vastly huge databases, that, that being something that Couchbase is really good at. And you don't want to take something with a billion records and try to sync it onto your iPhone. That's just not going to work. So you really are. Um, very likely going to need some kind of filtering so that you only get the records that are relevant to what you want to do on your device, like only the things addressed to you or, or matching your search criteria or you know mapping your geographic location or something like that. And in addition to size, there's also an issue of access control, that uh, if you have this huge data set on the server, depending on the type of application, that data may, ha may be um, 
privileged so only some people are allowed to see it. So you may have groups where like, you know, some admin group has greater ability to see data or people will, may create something like um, a chat room or a photo gallery that they want to invite specific people to and then nobody else should be allowed to see that. So we need filtering at that level too to decide, you know, of these things in the database, which ones are you actually allowed to see and should you be seeing? So let's go into the, just the connectivity first, what we're doing to make this work with Couchbase Server. So the, the deal is that we can't just really talk to the Couchbase Server protocol, the Memcached protocol, because this is designed for app servers, not for client apps. It doesn't have any kind of access control. It doesn't have any built-in validation. It's a binary protocol that's really difficult to use from uh, some programming languages. So it, it's really meant for um, only being talked to by an app server that's living you know, next, to your, next to the database server behind your firewall. Whereas by comparison, the CouchDB sync protocol is great. It's designed for client server type of applications. It has access control validation, all of that stuff. And of course, we already support it. We already have an implementation of that. So our solution was to um, build this new uh, gateway server which will sit in between the client apps and Couchbase server. Um, let me go back. It's um, one side of it, the left side in the figure here, is speaking the, the CouchDB protocol. So the clients can talk to it and replicate to it or from it just as though it were a, a CouchDB database. And on the right hand side, it's using the memcached, membase, Couchbase server server protocols to talk to the database server. So the gateway is pretending to be a CouchDB server, but it doesn't actually store anything. It has absolutely no disk I.O. going on in it at all. It just takes all these incoming requests um, through the CouchDB protocol and forwards them over to the real database server using the Couchbase protocol. Is that a uh, brain in a tank of green fluid in a wagon? Yes. yes. Just checking. To show, like, <laughs> it's to show how advanced and even slightly sinister this technology is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just checking. So, um, I talked about some of these scaling issues for large numbers of users, and here's the deal. Um, this diagram here sort of shows the old model that we were thinking of last year, and um, the sync point product kind of did things this way. Conceptually, every mobile device or every user wants to have their own database that they sync with. That contains, the, that database contains the records, the documents that they want, and uh, it can, sort of has some privacy from other people's databases. So I will, my mobile client will connect to my database, pull in all the new stuff that's available there, push out stuff that it's generated locally to that database. Um, but as you get to huge numbers of users, you end up with huge numbers of databases. And uh, if you can imagine the four here turning into much larger numbers, that's just turning into tons of I.O. because every document that arrives in that central master server in the middle there has to immediately get pushed out and replicated to the servers around it, which is perfectly straightforward to set up with CouchDB, but um, obviously it's an O of N problem, just the more databases you've got in there, the more I.O. is going on. And it gets even worse if you start thinking about bi-directional replication where the users are creating documents on their devices and if there's sharing going on, like if it's a shared photo album, then if I add something to the photo album database, then it also needs to get replicated to everybody else who's a member of that photo album so that it shows up in their copy of the database so that it'll get synced to their devices. And this is obviously turning into an O of N squared problem with just huge amounts of replication and I.O. going on. So this isn't really going to work. Instead, what we're doing now with the, the sync gateway is we are sharing a single database. So the, the sync gateway is really just talking to one database on the Couchbase server. And every client that connects to it is really talking to that same database. It's just that every client thinks that it's its own database because we've got some filters, which are those little things you can see in the middle of the arrows there, that are carefully sending only the right subset of the data to each client. Little coffee so the, filters, right? 
Yep. So the <laughs> first hit first hit on Google Images for the word filter. Okay. Works for me. Uh, the uh, so what we get here is we get scalability where um, the filter ensures that the client is only pulling down the docs that are relevant to it. So for example, if it's some sales database, then the client might only be pulling down the sales data for the California region instead of for everything worldwide. And it also handles access control. So um, the filter in there will not let the client get to any, like, any wiki pages that it wasn't invited into and will automatically sync down the ones that it is invited to. And then as the users, like, as they get invited to or de-invited from wikis, it will automatically propagate the right changes across. In theory, you can do this with CouchDB. In practice, it doesn't work because CouchDB's filtering just is not intended to scale this way. The, the way filtering works in CouchDB is that it basically tries to replicate everything, and for every document that it would send, it runs that document through this filter function, this JavaScript function, and says, hey, should I send this? And the function returns true or false. And if people have found that if you try to filter large data sets this way, the filter function ends up being a total bottleneck and eating up all of your time. CouchDB also doesn't have read access control on a per document level. The, their permissions model is such that if you can see a database, if you can access any document of a database, you can access every document of that database. So there really isn't a way to hide information if we're trying to put everything into a single DB. So what we're doing is introducing this notion of channels, which is something that Chris Anderson came up with, and just turns out to be a really great idea. Uh, this slide, uh, I apologize, would make a little bit more sense with the proper build effects going on, but the Hangout isn't letting me do that. So we'll start up here in the, the upper left corner. We've got the document. It's got some JSON in there, some kind of imaginary sales document. On the top right, we have a function. This is conceptually similar to the kind of map functions that you use in JavaScript or in Couchbase 2, but it has a slightly different purpose. It's also passed in the document as a, a JavaScript object. And its purpose is to call this sync function. And what the parameters to the sync function are one or more strings that are channel names, which are like tags. So th this function is tagging the document. It's part of the application server, conceptually. So it can look at this document and say, well, what tags should we apply to this? What channels should it go into? And this function here, you can see, has decided to apply the, the sales tag, since that's the department property from the document. And also, it's a, applying a, a tag based on the state of the sale. This is California. So the document goes into the database with two tags. That means it's going to be part of two channels. And then below there, you can see some other documents that are also being inserted into the database that are being added to different channels. Like the next one is a Washington sales document. And the third one isn't sales at all. It's something to do with R&D. Now, the, when the server gets those documents, it ends up indexing all of them. And under the hood, we're using views for this. Um, so every, essentially every tag that's in use is going to generate part of a view. There's kind of one master view that's managing all of these. But conceptually, you get this index for each tag, for each channel of which documents have been added into it. And this then means that when the clients come in and do a pull request, and they want to say, like, you know, sync me all the new changes on this set of channels, the server can then fairly efficiently go through and find one or more of these indexes and walk them in parallel, finding all of the, the new changes to send back to the client. And then the client ends up getting, in this case, just documents that uh, have been uh, tagged with the sales, uh, California, or Yens channel. So here we imagine that like I'm working in sales, and I've got a, also got a channel with my name for personal documents. On the other hand, uh, if a channel is not listed under my access control, which is that little blob of JSON there on the left, then I can't get documents that um, don't have any of my tags applied to them. So if that third document in the previous slide that just had the R&D tag on it, 
I can't get to that document. Like even if I could guess its ID, I couldn't fetch it because it doesn't match any of the tags that I have access to. So you can see in this case that we're filtering down the data, we're like reducing it down to data that I'm interested in, and also keeping data out of my hands that I shouldn't be allowed to see. So the current status of this stuff is that we've got Couchbase Lite and the Sync Gateway. Are, they're both in very active development, kind of in a pre-alpha state. The stuff is changing really rapidly. We've got some people playing with them, doing stuff with them, but you know, with the understanding that there's still a lot of moving parts, sharp edges, uh, changes, incomplete features, so on. Uh, I've put the GitHub URLs there in case people want to start looking at them. And they do have readmes, so there's more stuff to read there, at least, even if you don't want to get into the code. What we're planning to do, and of course, all plans are subject to change, we're planning to have more of a kind of more stable alpha type preview this spring. And then in the summer, we want to get uh, a beta release out where we address some of the scalability issues. Um, the designs here, the architectures that I've shown, we believe are scalable. Not all of the actual implementation currently is. And we want to fix up that stuff by this summer release so that people can actually start shoving lots of data through this and seeing how it performs. And then we would like to release kind of the you know, 1.0 GM, GA releases of this stuff by the end of the year. Awesome. Okay, so uh, uh, if uh, people want to interact some more with us, I think uh, they can certainly look up the Couchbase mobile uh, mailing list. Uh, and if uh, maybe you're a, a developer or working on a project at a company or something like that, I know we've had a couple of those situations, uh, probably the best way to get in touch with Couchbase the company, if you wanted to, would be um, either email one of us directly or send a, a note to uh, something like info at Couchbase and, and we'll get back in touch. Uh, but the call to action here is to to kind of join in the development and and help us uh, you know at least look over the readmes and tell us what uh, what you think works and what doesn't work for your kinds of apps, right? Yeah, totally. Great. I want to thank uh, thank you very much, Jens. Uh, that was that was really good. Uh, I I hope we'll be able to get you back on a future hangout and uh, see some uh, see some demos. Uh, so it shouldn't yeah, be too long, right? We have we have uh, two iOS apps we're working on right now. There's a a wiki and a chat application. They're both kind of in a state of flux. I didn't want to take the risk of showing them right now, but uh, I should definitely be able totally to get understand. some get some snapshots of those to do a demo of like maybe the next time we do one of these. Yeah, no pressure at all. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll certainly get you on a future Hangout, and if, uh, if anyone wants to uh, you know, give us comments on what they'd like to see in a Hangout, we'd be uh, open to uh, the comments as well. So let me, um, thanks Jens. Uh, I'm going to pop back over to the Google Plus page and just see if there are any uh, questions that folks have posted, uh, and you don't have to necessarily right now. Oh, there is one, actually, uh, or a couple comments up there. Uh, Jens, uh, this question looks like it's for you. The question is, in the TouchDB 1.5, would you have this, the REST API that can be accessible from PhoneGap kind of app? Uh, yes, so I didn't have time to get into that. The, the REST API sort of has been pulled out of the core part of the database um, mm. because it isn't necessary for apps that are for native apps. Mm -hmm. But it's still really useful for some other things. It's for, for the kind of phone gap case where you have a, an uh, HTML5 JavaScript app. Also, if you want to do peer-to-peer -peer replication where another device will connect to you. So there's a separate framework that you link in that has the REST API in it. So um, it's pretty easy to keep doing those apps the way you could with TouchDB 1.0. You just need to add in that other listener framework. And Chris is Chris has been working on a um, demo app for PhoneGap to sh make it really easy to just take that and clone it and start building your own PhoneGap applications that use Couchbase Lite. Okay, awesome. Uh, there's actually one other question for for you, Jens. Uh, the question is, and I uh, I think I know the answer, but I'll I'll, I'll go ahead and pose it to you. The question is. Uh, uh, from Dongsheng Wang, uh, he says, uh, only 3.5 uh, meg, that includes everything? Uh, 3.5 meg for the old Couchbase mobile. 
I yeah. assume that's what he means. Yeah. So the new one is actually even smaller, right? Right. Couchbase, Couchbase Lite is somewhere in the vicinity of 500k. So 500k, and we were at 100 millisecond startup time, which I can't measure really anyway. And now we're. It's <laughs> you know I haven't bothered to measure it exactly. Yeah. It's just it's pretty negligible compared to the startup time of the whole. Got app. it. So. Got um, it. Yeah, it's pretty tiny. Nice. Okay, and that's uh, as we know from uh, previous work. That's that's really important stuff when you're building a mobile app. You want to be able to to have that uh, startup time. You know, get get the data of the user pretty quickly. Yeah, uh, we had a number of iOS developers who were unhappy at uh, adding three and a half meg to their application footprint. Oh, previously. Yeah, it's pretty significant when uh, users are downloading your app over a cell connection. Uh, uh -huh. Developers would actually see their their sales would fall off if their apps got too large, just because people were less willing to, you know, impulse get the app. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, device device size is still uh, relatively limited. Uh, it's it's huge compared to what we think of as uh, uh, mobile devices from a few years ago. But it's still, if every developer, if every application brings in a few megabyte uh, before long, there's not much room left. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Um, cool. Uh, so I think that's it for questions. Uh, so great. Thanks, uh, thanks guys for joining the broadcast and, and asking those questions. Uh, I'm just going to reload one here one more time. Uh, this is not the last opportunity to ask questions, of course. We do have the mailing list, uh, and we um, you can always post things to our forums or the Google Plus page. It uh, doesn't look like there's anything there. Uh, if I can, I'm going to actually uh, pop in the screen share here for a second because I, I do want to, if you're uh, watching this um, in uh, uh, right now, uh, this won't be as useful in the future, uh, but uh, there are a few events that are uh, coming up in the not-too-distant future. So uh, in uh, on February 20th, well, this one's, I guess, in the past already, the big uh, data and data science in Israel. Uh, John Zablocki is going to be at the New York City .NET Developers Group talking about .NET and Couchbase uh, development on February 23rd. Uh, and of course, the, the reason I'm here in uh, in Tokyo is uh, uh, CouchConf Tokyo, which we're going to have on February 22nd. We've got an awesome uh, lineup and number of uh, uh, speakers uh, from uh, outside Couchbase as well as myself and uh, Sharon Barr are going to uh, give people a, a pretty good introduction. And then uh, next week actually gets to be sort of crazy busy because we have uh, we've been doing a series of developer days, and so that covers uh, Boston uh, and Oslo uh, on the same day. So we get a team going to Boston and a team going to Oslo, uh, and then uh, then we have Strata Santa Clara going on, and the, these two teams are actually doing a sweep, if you will. So there's a sweep through the northeast of the U.S. and a, a sweep through Europe. Trond will be at the Oslo one. Um, and then we have the Catch, Catchbase New York City Developer Day, so they they move from Boston to New York City, and the team the other team moves from Oslo to Copenhagen. Uh, and then uh, finally, there's the Dev Day in Stockholm and Toronto. So then they'll uh, they'll move their way uh, uh, you know to those cities as well, plus some other uh, um, events like webinars and so forth going on. So if you're interested in learning a little more about uh, Couchbase, maybe you've been tracking us for a while and just haven't had an opportunity to uh, to really show, uh, to really kind of uh, come through and uh, see, uh, I'm sorry, you haven't had an opportunity to really sit down and spend some time with Couchbase, this is a really good opportunity because you'll have some experts there, they'll have some material ready. Uh, and so it's a one-day uh, kind of event. You show up, uh, learn some stuff, and, and hopefully go away with some new tools. Uh, so I just want to make some folks aware of that as well. Uh, with that, uh, I think uh, I think that's what we want to cover today on the broadcast. Uh, Tron, did you have anything you want to say, or are you just uh, listening in? I was just listening in, and I have to say that I found Jen's presentation really interesting. Thanks yeah. a lot. Neat stuff going on there. Um, so... Uh, so with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, close the Hangout. This will be, uh, if uh, feel free to forward this on to somebody else. It's going to be archived on our, our uh, YouTube page as well as uh, on the Google Plus page, basically linking to the same thing. Thanks, Jens. Thanks, uh, Sergey and Trond. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye-bye.